Great. Well, it's, it's amazing to be here and kick off the, the science program today. Uh, so I would like to talk about hot springs and what they reveal about dirt deep earth processes. So I want to start with this really broad question about how are biology and subduction related, because it not, might not be entirely obvious to everyone at first glance. But if we think about uh, our planet as we know it today, which has uh, active biology and life as we know it, we rewind the clock four and a half billion years ago to we ha when we had a, a molten uh, uh, earth, which was, was initially forming. You know, how do we get from this point to the, life, to the planet that we know uh, today, which supports life? And really, uh, the key, I, I think, is, is plate tectonics. So I want to speak a little bit about uh, plate tectonics in particular, how plate tectonics move volatile elements, so things like carbon and water, between various reservoirs of earth. Um, so here, it's just a diagram where I'm showing uh, the, the carbon movements. This is, these are carbon fluxes and megatons of carbon per year. So we know uh, fairly well the amount of carbon which is being subducted into the Earth's interior. We can go to mid-ocean ridges and ocean island basalts. We can characterize what's coming out of these active volcanoes. And also, in uh, subduction zones, what's coming out of arc volcanoes. Uh, but big question marks remain, remain in subduction zones as to what happens on the periphery of these arcs in the back arc regions, in the four arc regions. Um, and you can see that there's these, these huge ranges of uncertainty about solid storage and what actually happens to the carbon in these really dynamic settings where you have, where you have subduction. Um, so in order to address these questions, we brought together a team of 25 early career scientists uh, in February of 2017 for the Biology Meets Subduction process, uh, uh, project. We had people from uh, representing six different countries on the expedition. Everyone was, was early career, so it was a really uh, exciting uh, field campaign. And what we were actually trying to do was we wanted to go across a subduction zone and characterize what's happening with respect to carbon. So looking at carbon emissions, um, excuse me, carbon emissions coming out of, of active volcanoes. And then we actually wanted to go into, into the volcanoes and compare those remote sensing measurements to, to measurements we made on the ground inside of the volcanoes. Um, and then we did extensive work in this uh, lower temperature um, four arc region where we're actually measuring um, hot springs and cold springs that are uh, emanating from, from the four arc region and then compare those results to um, constraints about how much carbon's going into the system, constraints that we have from uh, IODP expeditions. Uh, we published this work earlier this year in April in an article in Nature. Um, so just to set the scene of where we were working, we were working in Costa Rica. So if we zoom in on this area here, you can see we have an active uh, sub subduction zone. And we collected samples um, across two broad transects of Costa Rica. So we have these, we have the, the volcanoes are shown here with these little uh, triangles with the red tips. And we have uh, samples that we collected in this northern transect, which are the, the blue symbols and the orange symbols represent this, this central transect of samples. Um, so keeping those symbols the same, if we look at some of the uh, carbon isotope data as a function of dissolved inorganic carbon, I want you to focus on these, uh, the symbols, which are the, the, the solid symbols. These are uh, DIC values. We can see as we move from the volcanic arc um, towards, uh, towards the fork, outer fork and fork region, we have less and less dissolved inorganic carbon in, in the water phase, and the isotopes are, are significantly fractionated. Um, so we, we proposed, and we propose that this is due to uh, calcite precipitation. So as you're forming active calcite, you're pulling out the carbon, and you see this fractionated signature in the residual. And interestingly, we have, uh, we have very distinct trends between uh, the northern transect samples and the, and the central uh, transect samples. So there's, we can see the processes. We can see this calcite precipitation, which is pulling out the carbon. But we can also see the geology. We can see difference, differences between the northern and uh, central regions. Um, so here's another cartoon of how this, this sort of model works. We have uh, carbon, which is being transported into the system. Uh, it's either derived from the slab or from the mantle. And as it's released, we come up with an estimate of around 90% of the carbon is sequestered as calcite. And those signatures that we're measuring in the outer four arc, in the four arc, are the, are the uh, DIC values which have been fractionated due to this, this calcite precipitation uh, process. Um, so in total, we estimated in our paper that uh, calcite precipitation and microbial carbon fixation account for about 94% of the, 
uh, the, the carbon in the four arc region. So a significant amount of the carbon is being trapped in this, in this four arc region. Um, and this is something that we, we didn't uh, know before, we hadn't quantified before. So I wanna return to this uh, plot, which is showing, or this cartoon here, which is showing inputs and outputs. So if we have an idea, again, about what's being input in, by, by subduction in these systems, and then previously, you know, we have, we, have, we have very good constraints about what's coming out of active arc volcanoes. So previously, the, the calculation was we would, we would uh, take what's going in versus, and subtract what's coming out, and the difference between the two presumably would be the amount of carbon that's being transported into the deep mantle. Um, in this study, we were really focused on the four arc region. That's where we found this, we, uh, this, this uh, suggestion that large amounts of, of calcite precipitation may be happening, large amounts of carbon be, may be being trapped in the four arc, and that changes the equation. So instead of uh, just what's going in versus what's coming out, we need to account for what's being trapped as, as, as calcite in the, in the four arc region. Um, and if we do this, up to about 20% less carbon is, is being transported into the deep mantle, which is a significant um, amount, amount of carbon in these subduction zones. Um, so just wanna sum everything up about what we learned. Uh, carbon isotopes are, are fractionated due to calcite precip precipitation in the four arc, sequestering about 94% of the carbon. Uh, that's what we found in the, in the study in Costa Rica. And the four arc is really identified here as an important sink for carbon, which was previously uh, not recognized. Um, so just returning to this slide, I hope that I've convinced you, um, you know, in order to go from this molten earth to the earth that we know today, uh, which life thrives on, that um, plate tectonics is really, uh, oh, sorry, plate tectonics is really a, a critical uh, component. And I think we've, we've sort of understood a, a small uh, piece of the puzzle with this study that we've done in Costa Rica, understanding where the carbon is going. Um, so with that, I would just like, thank you. <laughs>